Every political ad aired on TV means more money is spent by political campaigns and special interest groups than millions spent just in our TV market alone and how many ads you may have already seen. You put four tokens in and they get three spins. Some area kids and their parents tried their luck at some games in Cedar Rapids, but everyone's a winner. That's a fact. We'll explain why. Live in high definition from your 24-hour news source, you're watching KCRG TV 9 News at 10. Thank you for staying up with us tonight. If you're tired of all the ads, especially for the U.S. Senate race here in Iowa for the open seat, there's good reason for any trepidation. Our TV market, Cedar Rapids, Waterloo, Dubuque, and Iowa City, has aired the most TV commercials for the Braley Ernst race in all of Iowa. In Monday's Gazette, investigative reporter Aaron Jordan looks inside the numbers and the dollars. Here are some of the main points. 8,300 of these ads from September the 11th through October 15th. That's 237 ads per day in the open seat for the U.S. Senate in Iowa. And that's just for the Senate race. During that stretch of time, Ernst Braley and their respective backing groups have spent nearly $14 million on TV ads across Iowa. And this is from an analysis by eight news organizations here in Iowa, including the Cedar Rapids Gazette. This also makes the total, again, just for the Senate race, about $27.7 million spent since Joni Ernst won the Republican primary back on June 3rd to face Democrat Bruce Braley in November. Our market has seen the most TV ads, nearly 17,000 commercial spots since the campaign started up. Now compare this with about 12,600 over in the Quad Cities and nearly 12,000 in the Des Moines TV market, which is the most populated and the largest geographical market in Iowa. Why so many of the ads here? The numbers of dollars spent here in our market may not be as steep as the other two, which might indicate lower ad rates, so more bang for each 30-second spot. Another major component of the shifting nature of the political ad spending comes in who is spending where. At first, Braley and pro-Braley ads filled Eastern Iowa TV, while Ernst and pro-Ernst ads were filling more of the airtime in the Sioux City market. Yet since September the 11th, that has shifted here as more Ernst spots are airing in eastern Iowa, about $200,000 more in ads than Braley. UI political science professor Tim Hagel said this might be a case where the candidates tried to shore up the politically friendly turf first before reaching into where the support might not be as strong. And this is just touching the surface of the findings from reporter Erin Jordan. Look for her extensive piece in Monday's Gazette as well as online at thegazette.com. Congressman Braley will have some political star power with him on Monday as he's campaigning. He starts his day in Dubuque at 845 where he will meet with local volunteers and organizers. But from then he will head to Davenport where Vice President Joe Biden will meet up with him for a campaign stop. On the Republican side, House Speaker John Boehner will be in Iowa tomorrow stumping for votes for first congressional district candidate Rod Blum. He faces Democrat Pat Murphy in November. Blum and Boehner will be campaigning at the campaign office at Blair's Ferry Road in Hiawatha. Boehner will also be in Davenport Monday night with Marionette Miller Meeks, who is running for Iowa's second congressional seat. She faces four-term Democrat Dave Lobsack. The search for a man who drowned in the Mississippi River is now over. The body of Roger Goodell was recovered on Saturday just south of Lock and Dam Number 9. That's north of Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin. He had fallen out of a boat while fishing two weeks ago and never resurfaced. The Crawford County, Wisconsin Sheriff's Department says the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers helped in the recovery because they allowed a gate to be lifted. Several agencies as well as family and friends searched daily until he was found. A neighborhood came together today to help rake leaves after an incident in Cedar Rapids. This guy, he's elderly. He, um, he was trying to rake leaves and he fell and bumped his head on the um, pavement. How does it make you guys feel knowing that you're helping him? It makes us feel good because we are kids and we are like helping old people out. Neighbors say that the man fell earlier today on 16th Street Northeast. He did need medical attention after cutting his head. Sounds like he's going to be okay, though. The kids told us they're glad that they could pitch in. Great day, though, for any people who did have to be outside. Those tasks like the leaves. Meteorologist Charlene Malin joining us now. Will this stick into the work week, though? Well, partially, at least into tomorrow. But after that, it's back to the cooler weather. We're starting to see a couple of those clouds roll in across eastern Iowa. They were found on our Monticello City Cam, our sunset from earlier this evening. Just a couple of clouds here and there. A beautiful sunset in general. More clouds on the way for tomorrow. Not quite as much sunshine early in the work week. Current temperatures 61 degrees in 
Cedar Rapids. We're at 58 in Dubuque, 56 in Iowa City, dropping to 59 in Washington and 57 in Monticello. Winds still from the southeast at about 10 to 20 miles an hour. It's a little bit lighter when you go into town. Pinpoint storm net around Lynn County shows about 5 to 15 mile an hour winds there. Those are going to be boosting our temperatures into tomorrow. Now tonight, not quite as cold. 53 degrees, your overnight low. Upper 60s already by the noon hour. We're back in the 70s for afternoon highs. We'll give you full details of that forecast, including when we might cool down coming up in just a few minutes. Chris. Thank you, Charlene. As the fight over quarantines with Ebola heats up, the governor of New York is backing down from his tough stance. Andrew Cuomo, along with New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, put out an order on Friday saying that medical workers who are returning from West Africa must undergo a mandatory 21-day quarantine. While Christie is sticking by that, Cuomo is loosening the restrictions. Healthcare workers will now be quarantined at home and monitored twice a day by medical professionals. This comes after Nurse Casey Hickox was quarantined in an isolation tent at a New Jersey hospital. This is an extreme that is really uh, unacceptable, and I feel like my basic human rights have been violated. This is a war on a virus in West Africa. And uh, anything we can do to, to extend those types of benefits to these healthcare professionals, uh, we want to do. Governor Cuomo likened the benefits to those of veterans returning from war. The White House says it has concerns with some of the new state guidelines. From a food pantry to summer camp for kids and housing assistance for many, the Salvation Army of Cedar Rapids helps many families in eastern Iowa. The mission is to help others, especially those enduring difficult times. KCRG TV9 Joe Caspery shows us how today people had a little bit of fun while raising funds. On this Sunday night, there's plenty of fun to be had. For the kids, I love playing games. And the parents. We'll find out once my son gets me in the bumper cars. That could be scary. <laughs> Oh, we got the big one. Friendly competitions broke out. But tonight, everyone here is a winner. That's because their admission money will help pay for services to help those in need. This is really just to help raise some money for our youth programs or senior programs that we have throughout the year. Half of their admission at Planet X is going straight to the Salvation Army. That $5 can really help. That goes quite a ways, actually. We can make the dollar stretch a little bit. Um, you know, when we think of craft supplies or after school, you know, to have supplies for those groups. We help others with, um, if they're struggling, like maybe to meet their monthly bills if they've been off work for a while, you know, so we just do lots of good things like that that help folks that need a little help up. If you raise enough money, you can send them to support groups and help other people that are homeless get homes, food, a job. So tonight they're helping others. There you go, yeah. And they're having fun doing it. Because you get to play games. That's the whole fun part about it. In Cedar Rapids, Jill Caspery, KCRG TV9 News. Thank you, Jill. From this, we're told they did raise a total of $300 tonight. This is just the start, though, of the Salvation Army's busy season, as it actually starts very soon at 930 tomorrow. People who are eligible can sign up for holiday assistance at the Salvation Army in Cedar Rapids on C Avenue Northwest. That means toys and food as well. And the red kettle season takes place starting on November 13th. A new business is coming to Cedar Rapids, and it could bring up to 80 Jobs, Freddy's Frozen Custard and Steak Burgers is expected to open early in March. It's a Wichita-based chain. The Cedar Rapids store will be on Blairs Ferry Road next to the Walmart west of I-380. Freddy's plans to hire about 80 people and will participate in upcoming job fairs throughout the area. A mix of art and eclectic items on display at Hawkeye Downs all throughout the weekend. The Midwest Antique and Art Show brings in collectors and vendors from across the U.S. From eclectic to Americana and antique, there was something there for so many people to check out. One of the show's promoters says this event also offers something for novice and experienced collectors. Sophisticated, high-end, as well as the beginner and the person just initially beginning their uh, collections and their searches for unique items. The antique show will return to Hawkeye Downs in April. This has been going on for the past 28 years. How would you make your daily commute to work perfect or at least a little more tolerable? From I-380 to some of the roundabouts, we asked what would make your commute just a little bit better. It's the focus of this week's Ask and Answer next. And this is no ordinary walk. How history comes to life just for Halloween at a graveyard site. Stay with your 24-hour news source, KCRG TV9.
Live, on air, and online from your 24-hour news source, Chris Earle, meteorologist Charlene Malin, and Josh Christensen Sports. This is KCRG TV9 News at 10. about politicians and your retirement. But with millionaire Rod Blum, it's his own words. Blum actually wrote articles in support of privatizing Social Security on Wall Street. He said seniors are getting larger Social Security checks than warranted. And Blum even said, we have to raise the retirement age. And on Medicare, Blum wrote it could become a voucher system. Millionaire Rod Blum, in his own words. The Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee is responsible for the content of this advertising. The news never ends. We're there to help you understand those stories. At KCRG TV 9, that's our job. That's our promise. Celeste Blum cleaned houses and scrubbed floors to provide for her family. Later in life, her son Rod Blum cared for her as she died from cancer. It was a tough fight, but it was a good life. And that tough fight was made possible because Celeste had Social Security and Medicare. Rod Blum will protect Social Security and Medicare because for him, it's not just good policy, it's personal. I'm Rod Blum and I approve this message. I've been a nurse on the sexual assault response team. I've seen lots of cases. Many of them are very brutal. It breaks your heart. I'll never understand politicians who make it even harder. Politicians like Joni Ernst. She'd outlaw abortion even for victims of rape and incest. She'd ban a woman's right to choose even for women who've been through that trauma, absolutely brutalized. Joni Ernst has no idea what people like this go through. The Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee is responsible for the content of this advertising. It's a mess. Dirty, noisy, and it stinks. Not this lot. I'm talking about the one in Washington. Too many typical politicians hogging, wasting, and full of, well, let's just say, bad ideas. It's time to stop spending money we don't have and balance the budget. I'm Joni Ernst. I approve this message because cleaning up the mess in Washington is gonna take a whole lot of Iowa common sense. For anyone with a car and a place to be for work, there's the commute. Some are short, some are long, some are quick and easy, and some are endless crawls along I-380. For this week's KCRG TV9 and Gazette Ask and Answer, take a trip to commuter fantasy land, if you will. Click your heels three times and tell us how would you improve your daily commute. It's a part of life we can all find something to gripe about. Driving to work and then back home, suffocating traffic on 380 between Cedar Rapids and Iowa City, maybe not enough room on 965 in North Liberty, the lights maybe not ever seeming to be synced up in town in Cedar Rapids, and this thing. Yet rather than complain, we wanted to reach out to all of you to look for a solution here. In this week's Ask and Answer, we ask, how would you improve your daily commute? Dan from Solon uses some imagery for us. If I could snap my fingers and improve my commute in the corridor, I would find a quick blockage-free alternative to what has become a congested and messy I-380 situation. Frank in Cedar Rapids takes the lead foot comes with a price approach. He says, I'd like to have a lane that's for unlimited speeds. Drivers could pay a fee and get an annual pass. Get rid of the roundabouts, said Susan from Solon. She insists that they are creating bottlenecks and near-miss crashes where she is. Matthew North Liberty also takes a look at the growing population of his city, calling for an exit at Forever Green Road and I-380. That's just a couple of miles north of Interstate 80. All of these opinions are being welcomed by leaders with the Iowa Department of Transportation as they've been working on a survey to try to find where the drivers actually think the trouble spots are and how to ease this unpleasant talk of getting around. But our real goal is to try and reduce those single commuters in their own car. We understand it's a convenience issue for people, but if at all possible we can get two or more people in a vehicle, that's going to help us maintain the traffic that's out there. In next week's Ask and Answer, we're looking at how overwhelming the political race can be. In many ways, candidates and campaigns are more accessible than ever, but the abundance of events and information can also be overwhelming. How would you improve the campaign process? Just reach out to us on social media through Facebook or send us an email if you like. Answer at KCRG.com. A group of volunteers in Johnson County helped bring some history to a Coralville cemetery. Very friendly, strong man with a huge heart for kids pets and gardening. 
Oak Hill Cemetery was the site of this year's Beyond the Grave walking tour. Each year, volunteer actors dress as former residents of Johnson County to tell their life story. Actors say people tend to notice the residents' names when they walk through. They also say the characters also offer the opportunity to interact with the past. You can walk through a cemetery and there's Mr. Smith or Mrs. Jones, but you don't know anything about them in many, many cases. So we uh, asked for volunteers to do this, and this, uh, this time it was my grandfather's name in the Corville Cemetery, and I thought who better to tell the real story, the most story, than myself. And this year's tour was in Coralville, but the event has traveled to a different location throughout Johnson County each year. This warm fall weekend we all got to enjoy will at least trail us into Monday, kicking off the work week nicely. But there's a chance we could also see some rain to temper some of that. Meteorologist Charlene Malin looks at the full forecast next. But first, here's a look at the headlines you'll read in the Monday Morning Gazette. Stay with your 24-hour news source, KCRG TV 9.